Hey guys, it's T Dubs Gaming here, um, with my first gaming video ever. Uh, I wanted to do it on a game I really love, uh, Victoria 2. Uh, this game came out in 2010, I believe. Um, I didn't pick it up until probably four or five years ago, but I have somewhere around 400 hours in this game. A lot of my time has been spent playing this game. Uh, I really do enjoy this game very much. Uh, Paradox games in general are really good, but this is probably my favorite. Um, it's really complex, um, really hard to master, but uh, pretty easy to get into um, at the surface level. Um, maybe not, actually. Uh, that might be a little false. It is pretty complex, but uh, if you like kind of micromanaging games, um, maybe not to an extreme micromanagement. It can be at times if you want it to be, but it can also be kind of automated and uh, just really fun. Um, I'll kind of give you a basic tutorial of how this game works. Um, I am running with both DLCs. Uh, that would be A House Divided, which affects the United States in the Civil War, and A Heart of Darkness, which affects uh, African colonization and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, just a little basics about this game. Uh, you can play as any country you want. Um, I'm just kind of give you a rundown here. Um, players that have played Victoria 2 will notice that this map is a little different. Um, this is not the vanilla game. I am playing with historical flavor mod on. I believe it's 1.7 point something another. Um, I might need to update it. It might be a little antiquated, but uh, yeah, this is. It adds a whole bunch of new nations here. There's some minor nations like uh, is this Monaco, yeah, San Marino, I believe, uh, Andorra here. Um, what is this one? I'm gonna guess it right quick. Liechtenstein. Hello, there we are. And then Neutichel, which uh, Prussia has some claims on, but we'll get into that later. Um, as you see, I have some test games over here. Um, I wanted to do Japan, but uh, I'll probably do that one for another video. That's really fun. Uh, it starts out as the Shogunate. This game does take place from 1836 to 1936, and it goes day by day. So uh, Japan's really fun. You can do a lot of stuff in Asia over here, Southeast Asia. But I want to play Serbia. I feel like you can learn a lot in Serbia. It's a good way to learn micromanagement. Um, it's a really fun game overall. Uh, playing in Serbia, you get a lot of options to form Yugoslavia and the like. Um, so uh, I'll just hop in here and I'll start to explain some things. I hope the music's not too loud. I've been messing around with the audio settings in OBS. Um, I really do love the music in this game. It's probably some of the best music in uh, any Paradox game. Um, right off the bat, we do get a notification about the Austrian Empire allying Royce, which is a small German miner. Um, it's just kind of like the different map modes. This is the geograph uh, geography map mode, political, um, infrastructure, we'll mess around with that later. Diplomatic, and with this, you see this is our nation, uh, Serbia, and then we have claims or cores on Bosnia, uh, Fedonja, something like that. I don't, I'm really bad at pronunciation. Southern Serbia and Northern Macedonia. Um, here's the region map mode. You get to see Southern Serbia, Northern, uh, I guess it's Macedonia. Um, and there's the Vojvodna, I believe, and Bosnia. Um, revolt risk, we won't deal with that right now. Administrative colonial recruitment. National focus, naval, we don't have any ports right now, we're landlocked. Crisis, that'll come into play later. Um, relations, civilization, everyone over here is civilized, everyone over here is not. Um, just kind of reflects the time period of 1836. Migrations, we'll see that change a little bit later. Uh, rankings, you get to see the great powers or the bright greens. Uh, the brighter the green, the greater the power. Yellows are minor powers and or their civilized nations blues are secondary powers i believe and the reds are uncivilized nations party loyalty don't really care about that right now um supply limit we'll deal with that later as well sphere of influence right now serbia starts in the sphere of influence of the ottomans i'll get into a little bit more about that later um culture you see we are serbian so everyone here is serbia not everyone but the majority of people here are serbian that's why we can get claims on uh, this province southern serbia i don't know why we get a province or a claim on uh, northern macedonia 
but uh, maybe there are some Zerbs there. Um, doesn't appear that way, but we do get claims there. Not really sure why that's a thing. Um, and we get Bosnia, Bosnians, Bosnia, Herzegovina, or Herzegovina, uh, Croatians, um, Montenegrins, Serbians, all kinds of good stuff. Population, um, not even on the right nation. Gives you a breakdown of where most of our people live. Um, you can see the world as compares us to the world. Uh, and our RGO output. We produce coal and grain. Three provinces of grain, one province of coal. Coal's kind of big. We only produce 4.6 of this uh, every day, but we can boost that with technology. We'll see that later. Pretty much covers all the map modes. I have a couple notifications over here. They're not really important. Uh, I have my options set up to where the really big ones that affect our nation will be either pause the game or there'll be pop-ups. Um, I'll just hop into it, kind of give you some strategy guides as we go. Um, this is where we'll set our national focus, gives you a breakdown of our population, um, the needs they're getting, life needs, uh, everyday needs, and luxury needs. Um, kind of give you an idea of the Serbian. 500 Serbians live in... I'm not even going to try. Let's do 400 Romanians in Boar. They're Orthodox, they're soldiers. Um, they're not militant, not conscious. This is their political breakdown. This is their issues, what they consider important. Um, unemployment rate, uh, this is their cash reserve, so they'll build, our pops will build up savings. Um, and if they're getting their needs, their rebel faction, population change per um, population type, and their literacy. Um, this is what makes this game so great to me, is that every person in your nation belongs to a group. These groups fluctuate, they affect your nation, how it performs on an international scale, what you're able to do. It's really just next level micromanagement if you really want to get to it. Um, here's all the different pop types. We don't have any capitalists or clerks or craftsmen since we don't have any factories when we start. Um, no serfs, that's a Russian thing, and no slaves. Um, maybe serfs aren't exclusive to Russia, but that's like historically what I know serfs as being or Russian. I think they do get some events to do that. Um, I'll just kind of go over the brief uh, heads-up display up here. We have our production. We see we don't have any factories. Um, foreign investment uh, is grayed out. No one's invested in us yet. Production, it gives you a breakdown of all of the goods that can be produced. I know Historical Flavor Mod adds some. Um, various, I think it adds precious metals or precious goods. Um, that might be the only one it adds, honestly. Um, but you see what we produce. This is coming from our laborers, and 4.67 laborers are able to produce 4.7 coal. I think it's just a roundup there. Um, cement is produced by artisans, which are like craftsmen, but they don't work in factories. They're just regular population. Um, I think they're a middle-class citizen, too, where craftsmen are the low-class citizens. Um, everything else here is produced by our artisans. Where is our grain? Oh yeah, the grain is here. Produced by farmers and laborers. Um, as you can see, industrial goods and consumer goods are produced by craftsmen and artisans versus like uh, consumer goods being grain and uh, raw materials are produced by different pops. Um, projects, this is where we'll get projects from our uh, capitalists. When they get in our country, they'll start building things like railroads and factories. We can invest in them, or we can just let them run their course. This is where the automation comes in in this game. Check out our budget tab. I'll have to make some adjustments here. You get a breakdown of your daily income. Breaks down each population by class. And shows your precious goods, your debt down here, and your expense sliders. Um, right now, I'm going to raise taxes on everyone. And we're going to raise our tariffs all the way. Um, I like to run education at 100%, but we won't be able to do that from the beginning. And I'm going to drop our military down to 30, not the lowest. We won't have to worry about Navy because we're landlocked. And this is our constructions. When we start to build things, this will is 100%. will 100% fund everything. I'm going to leave military at 50%. Um, I think we're all good here. Um, Administration is going to be big. Just remember 5.5 and our bureaucrats. I'll show you something. Our first strategy is going to be to deal with this. Um, technology. Um, Army is pretty important. Each technology gives you... Um, different advantages here, as you can see, and we also get different inventions 
that have a monthly chance of popping. Um, they give you different bonuses, and you can see we have a base chance of 2, plus a 3% bonus chance since we have mechanical production. If we research factories, we get an additional 2%. So right now this would have a 5% chance of popping every month. Um, Navy, we won't need to worry about this because they're landlocked, obviously. Commerce is going to be kind of important later, but not at the beginning. Um, I'll jump over to industry. Um, industry is going to be a big one. We're ready to industrialize. Um, I shouldn't have done that. And we're going to take basic chemistry first, actually, because I like to rush medicine. Medicine gives you all of these. It's like a tooltip. One thing about Paradox Games, read the tooltips. They are so helpful. They break down everything, give you uh, all sorts of bonuses, everything you need to know about your nation. Um, well, we, we'll uh, want to rush medicine at the beginning to get the pop growth. Our population is kind of low, but we'll get into that later. Um, deal with national focus. Um, so I'm going to take basic chemistry to begin with. It costs 360 or you know, 3,600 points, and right now we generate 4.3, but we'll see that rise later when we uh, deal with our national focuses. Um, our politics tab not very important right now, but it will be once we get more liberals in the upper house, we'll be able to do some different political reforms. Um, we have the reactionary party. This party is the percentage of people that want things to go to a previous state in your country, uh, the way things were before. So if you get down to like basic school system, you get the right to vote, that kind of stuff, they'll want it to go back to no voting. They'll want to avert policies. Conservatives want things to stay the way they are. And liberals want to get more reforms passed. Um, right now our ruling party is a conservative party. Uh, we don't have voting, but our people ideologies are here. When we get the right to vote, uh, we will see the voter ideologies here. Um, we see the issues here and the amount of people that are behind them. How many people care about them? Jingoism is pretty big. That's uh, your willingness to go to war as a nation. Um, I think that's infected by revengeism um, and plurality. Plurali plurali plurality will affect our research rate, I believe. It re it's reflective of our consciousness here. Um, we'll get events to that'll change this later, and it goes up. Tooltips are really important, like I said before. And revanchism is your nation's, or the people of your nation's, willingness to take back land that was lost. And since we're Serbia, we have all those cores. People want our land back. Um, we also have our movements. Nothing going on right now. This will happen once uh, we, once people will want some reforms, they'll start movements. Um, different cultures will start movements to break off of your nation. That kind of stuff. We have our decisions here, I'll revisit this in a minute. Release nations, not really important, but when you do release nations, you lose infamy. Uh, infamy's kind of important, you get it when you, uh, to go to war in this game, you need to get uh, Cassus Belly, and to get those, um, you have to go to Diplomacy, which we'll get to later, um, and you have to get a reason to go to war. Uh, you, they can be detected and you'll get infamy. If you go over 25, every nation in the world will get Maybe it's just the great powers, but every a lot of nations get the cast belly to attack you and bring you down to size, that kind of stuff. So we don't want to go over 25. Um, I'm going to take some decisions here. First off, I'll choose a trade policy. Um, we're not going to protect the Serb economy because I don't really like that, and it lasts for 10 years. So I don't really want to mess up my tax efficiency because that's where we're going to be making a lot of our money to begin with. Um, so I'm going to set flexibility. I don't want to completely disable this. I'll just set it to flexible. We'll get more options. Like this one will pop up. You'll get more uh, options here when you get market regulations. So uh, we're good there. If I uncheck that, it won't pop up up here letting me know. Um, but I want to leave it there. Tech schools, we'll mess around with that later once we get our total score up. Um, so just got the options here. This is custom to historical flavor mod. You can change some things. Uh, edit some things, how you want to play the game. I typically disable microstates so we won't be playing with Monaco, all of them. It's not really important to me. I don't really care that much. Um, doesn't really add anything to the game, to be honest, other than just historical accuracy. Um, Anarcho-liberals are fine. Uh, we'll leave Crisis off. Normally they'll start at the beginning of the game, but uh, and this mod is an extension of the HPM mod. Um, so, in the HPM mod, they start after 1870, but the HF, um, HFM mod allows you to disable that. Um, I'll just leave all of that. Don't really care about Easter eggs. Workplace events are fine. Bankruptcy, don't really care. These things can get kind of uh, spammy. 
but uh, it's fine. Occitania, don't really care about that. Party loyalty, unzip events. We'll just leave all of those how they are. I'll hide that. We get to look at our, all of our decisions. Create Romania, not really important. We're not looking to do that. What we're looking to do is form Yugoslavia, and here you see what we need to do that. Um, our prestige. It needs to be above 30. We need to have national nationalism and imperialism. We need to have Sarajevo and Agram. Um, here's our prestige right now. I'll get more into the total score in a minute when we get to diplomacy. Um, Kingdom of Serbia. To do that, uh, here's the different um, possible or the different requirements to get into that. We'll be looking at that, at that later. We'll want to take this event to get the bonus in prestige. I think Yugoslavia also gives you prestige. Yeah. Uh, it also gives you some accepted cultures, so your uh, population of accepted cultures will go up. Uh, Greater Serbia. Um, we'll get claims on a lot of stuff. Uh, that can be big later. We'll want to look and click on that later. Sphere of influence, not really important right now, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, border policy and renovate Belgrade. Um, we'll want to do this later, but we'll need to get more tech. So, with that, we'll move to the population tab. I think we've already went over this briefly. Uh, just kind of showing the different pop sizes, all that kinds of stuff. Um, like I said before, uh, the Serbian population, culture, soldier size, all kinds of details here. Uh, what we'll actually want to do here is click this button and set our national focus. Right now, we only have one. Our technology allows us to have two, but uh, we only have 161,000 people of our accepted culture, which is Serbian, and they limit us to one national focus. What we want to do here is we're going to want to take bureaucrats. Uh, normally, I would take intellectuals, um, or I used to, but then I watched more videos, learned some new strategies, and I learned the bureaucrats is pretty big. Um, and with that, they'll help you, like before with the administration, if we encourage bureaucrats, our administration percentage will go up and we'll get more money. They'll be more efficient at collecting tariffs and promoting pops. Um, so the low tier pops, like farmers, can become something else. They can become, um, they'll move up the social ladder, which is kind of important. Um, trade right now gives you prices of all of the trade goods. Um, I'm not sure about this, the uh, automate trade. You can select things to trade for yourself, but I've never seen it work before. I don't know what the deal is with that. So I just leave it on automate. If we build something and we need ammunition, they'll buy it. Um, we see our needs, our market activity, our stockpile, and our common market. Um, I don't really mess around with this tab too much, um, unless I want to see the top producers of things. Um, diplomacy, this is where our score comes into play. Right now we have six points, just uh, our total of our prestige, our industry score, and our military power. And that puts us at 28 overall, which is not a secondary power, and is uh, just a regular civilized nation. Secondary powers start at 16. So the last secondary power is Mexico, and then Hanover will be the first civilized nation. Um, and they have prestige, military, industry, all that kind of stuff. So we'll look at United Kingdom here. They're a good uh, representative here. So we see the prestige. Um, we'll get events, technologies can increase this, and I think we get a base gain, yeah, 0 .01 uh, per month. This will go up, I believe, if not per year, I'm not exactly sure. Um, industry here, we see the industry broken down by uh, region as well as foreign investments. Then our military score is broken down by soldiers and army, capital ships, and leaders. Um, we'll get into that later, and you see their rank here. Um, this is the sphering mechanic in this game. If you're a great power in the top eight, you can add the smaller nations to your sphere, and you gain their RGOs, which are like uh, their resources they produce. So like grain, coal, all that kind of stuff. You'll gain access to that. Um, if you're a nation and you get sphered, um, you'll lose some income coming in from your production. But uh, that's that's something we are gonna have to overcome being in the sphere of the Ottomans. But uh, I'll show you how we'll, how we can get uh, away with that. Um, to do this, you'll spend points. We can't do it right now since we're a minor nation, but you'll set priority here. You'll gain points for uh, whatever nation you want to go with, like uh, daily points. Um, once you get to 50, you can increase opinion. Uh, that'll take you to cordial if you're at neutral, um, and then they'll put you at friendly once you get to the next 50. And then when you hit 100, you can add them to the sphere. But you can also spend your points to discredit other nations that are trying to sphere in that country. Expel advisors, ban am, embassy, 
all of this costs different uh, amounts of points. And then if you're trying to go, say I want to come and take uh, one of these nations, let's say we take the Hudson Bay Company out of the United Kingdom sphere, we'll have to get 100 points to remove them and then add them back. But there's some strategy behind this. We won't really get into that in this game, uh, maybe. Maybe after we form Yugoslavia, but we'll see. Um, you can increase relations with our Diplo points here. Right now we earn 0.3 Diplo points a month. Um, we have 2.3. So I think most of these actions, form alliance is one, military access is one. Um, increase relations, which we're, we're going to be hitting that button a lot, is one. And decrease, or is two, and decrease relations is one. Um, and kind of sort or filter these tables. Uh, let's see here. And our military, this is our last tab here. As you break down of your military, everything important here. Um, all of this we'll get into later, trying to min-max stats, get the best military we can. Um, we can create generals and admirals, but that's based on our officer, our leadership score here, uh, which is affected by how many officers we have in our population. So the pop tab is really big on generating points to become a better nation. So right now we have 250 officers, let me make sure that's everything, yeah, in the Serbia. And they generate 1.3 leadership points a month, I think. Um, so 0.02 is, or 0 0.20 is optimal. And we see the different effects that our things have here. Um, I don't really mess around with creating generals and stuff unless I need one. Because every time you build a unit, if you have 20 uh, leadership, it automatically generates one. And the, each general has their own stats, like this guy is a gifted administrator and open-minded and that adds organization reliability but they do have negative buffs sometimes um, I think this is his uh, that is prestige yeah so if he wins battles I think he'll gain prestige um, get different bonuses that kind of stuff we can also mobilize here um, which will give us two brigades for free but we take a penalty in production and they're just regular pops they're farmers miners that kind of stuff not trained soldiers um, we won't want to mobilize until we're ready to go to war, and we will need to do that because we're a smaller nation. We can build an army, um, we can build infantry, cavalry, or artillery. I'll go into more of this later. We don't really have the funds to do that right now. I think artillery is, or infantry, yeah, they cost 1.15 uh, sterling, or pounds, or whatever that, I think it's pounds, uh, pounds sterling, uh, a month, or a day, and we don't really have the uh, resources to fund them right now. We will want to get a lot of artillery. Probably won't mess around with cavalry. I'll probably wait till we get uh, hussars because they had reconnaissance, which is really big. Um, I don't really get uh, cressiers or dragoons. They're good at attacking and whatnot, but really we only need one hussar for every nine other units. So for every stack of ten, you need at least one hussar or one or yeah one hussar to get the 100% reconnaissance. I'll show you that tab in a minute. Um, I can do it right now. Where's our military? Here we get a breakdown. We have our commander here. 6,000 men. Each uh, battalion or division you build um, is 3,000 men. We see there's soldiers. Um, if these were mobilized troops, they'd be farmers and laborers. We have their... Uh, what is this? Experience. Yeah, we get text to do different experience. Uh, boost experience. Uh, makes them perform better in battle. Um... We have their speed here, their supply, uh, our units could be out of supply, they move slower, that kind of stuff. We have zero reconnaissance, because we have no um, cavalry here. We have siege ability, that'll come from uh, engineers. We'll have to research that tech later. I normally put one engineer per ten, so I'll have one cavalry and one engineer per ten units. Um, I'll normally go four infantry and four artillery. Artillery is really good in this game. But what you want to have is frontline units. Um, so you'll have four infantry in the front line when the game when the battles are simulated, and four artillery behind those infantry. We'll see that later. I'll show you whenever we get in our first battle how that works. Um, our cavalry will take up a fifth spot or spot on the front line, and our engineers will sit on the fifth spot on the back line. Um, we can get some flanking action too, which might want us to build two cavalry, but I t uh, typically don't mess around with that. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, not really that serious. Did I already change the budget? Yeah. So with that, I'm probably going to call this video to a close. I uh, will press start uh, in the next video and kind of give you a quick breakdown of what I'm looking to do. Um, give you an idea of how my test games went and what we're looking to see as far as events go and territory to take and that kind of stuff. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys.